on you. I hope you leave the toilet paper stuck on your shoe. You see, there's something about me that you should know. For me, there's plenty of hope. Hello and welcome to the Happy Hour, the funniest radio show that touches subjects that you've probably never even thought of, including others that you're probably tired of hearing of, but from a comedian's perspective. I'm your host and MC. My name is Zenith Nevers, and uh, my co-host is Paul Jensen. Paul, what's up? Not much today. <laughs> uh, we are always, well, I don't know if we're always, but we definitely are honored by the presence of our significant others, wow. who are very, very, very beautiful, strong women. Meow. Say hi, Sarah and Gina. Hi, Hello. Sarah. Hi, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have, uh, this is our, our, our third. If you've missed out on previous ones, you can listen to them all on the goatfm.com. You can also watch videos. They are actually, uh, all the, all of our radio shows are shot as well. So that, uh, so you can view it for your viewing pleasure. Uh, you can check that out on the Goat FM Facebook page. Uh, Today we've got a show that is jam-packed with awesome subjects like, for example, upcoming movies. We're going to talk about uh, everybody having equal rights. And we're going to talk about body hair. Woo! Uh, this weekend, first off, uh, Paul, how was your weekend of comedy? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I drank way okay. too much. And Gina and I yes. totally coyote ugly at Jackie's. Heck yeah. Uh, I, I, we made good use of that lipstick and glitter. That's right. Yeah, let me just make it clear. I perform comedy. My wife Sarah joins me so she can sit at the bars and make, and friends. make friends. Right. I do want to go ahead and say that uh, we love Jackie. Yes. Uh, she is always the best. Uh, Last time I was there, somebody asked me if I was her daughter. I, and we were both really happy about it. It's believable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's possible. Jackie is uh, still a very attractive woman. Uh, she actually performed with uh, quite a few, I believe, uh, dance routines. Do you know? You you guys would know more. Yeah. She well, had... In case uh, you folks are wondering, he's talking about uh, a woman named Jackie Knight who runs a small comedy club out of St. Augustine. Great uh, place if ever you're in the area. And she has quite the history in entertainment. She uh, used to travel with her father, who was uh, uh, a musician, and he would perform with all the big... Uh, guys back in the day, uh, I'm trying to think, Tony Bennett and Johnny Mathis. Yeah, she has pictures with them, which is so um, cool. Very and cool. then she uh, got into radio, and then uh, she's currently married to an ex-WWF or WE, whatever it is, wrestler. She had her own group of strippers. Yeah, she used to run uh, strip shows of some sort. I was not around for that, but she's hey. She's been a little bit into anything right. and everything, I think. But currently yeah. she runs a, a comedy club in St. Augustine, and Zenith and I were just there, had an awesome show. Yes. And uh, what do you got coming up? Uh, well, l let's talk about uh, some movies that are coming up this weekend. Um, right. uh, have you guys seen the uh, previews to Red Sparrow? I did see the previews to it. I felt like... Um, it looks really neat, but I it reminded me so much of some of the backstory of what is it Black Black Widow, Widow from the Marvel movies. from the Marvel movies. So yeah. I'm kind of curious to see if they're gonna, you know, keep how close the story will be, how similar the story will be, or if there's some sort of twist in it that's gonna make it super different. Yeah, yeah, it, it did have like a, a a Black Widow kind of feel Vibe. to it. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, also, a very interesting, and I'm semi looking forward to that, is Death Wish. Death um, Wish, yes. Some people are being negative already about it, but I, I don't know. I, it's Bruce Willis. What is on. that one? I don't know it. It's a remake of uh, a series oh, of wait, movies from is when that I. the one? I know what it is now. Go ahead. Right. Thank you for that. that... <laughs> this is what it is this, to be married. This is called <laughs> Great Radio. Uh, no, there was a series of movies back in the 70s with Charles Bronson where basically he. Uh, becomes a vigilante, takes the law into his own hands by blowing away the bad guys, and I guess uh, they're doing a remake with Bruce Willis. Time will tell if it's a worthy remake or not, but I guess apparently a lot of people are already saying it's going to be awful. Who knows? I love Bruce uh, Willis. Bruce Willis is pretty hit or miss these days in his movies, so uh, we'll no, see after not. it comes out. Yes, he Bruce is. Willis. Uh, not to be confused with Blowing the Bad Guys, uh, that's a different movie uh, called uh, <laughs> Wishlist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so we, do we got any uh, shows coming up this weekend? Um, I believe we, we were also in the Keys, uh, Gina and mm -hmm. I. We did a show down there in Ida Morata, and that was pretty fantastic. I've never been there. Is it beautiful? The Keys is beautiful. Um, it's where I spent the majority of my childhood. Actually. Oh, really? I, I was, didn't know yeah, that. I was born Key. in Chicago, raised in Marathon. Key. Key. Marathon Key, yeah. Oh, okay. Marathon, Little Florida. Key. We did go to the Keys, one of our cruises, didn't we? Just for an afternoon or something? I actually yeah, offered think. Paul the show, okay. and he was like, no. So We didn't there was offer that. enough money. <laughs> yeah, don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> don't you know? Plus, I'm doing a private show that week, so... Yeah. Uh, that's good, that's good. That's yeah. Good. I mean, I, I hope you bomb, but that's cool. Oh, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't bomb. Sorry. <laughs> He's so humble. I know, so right? Humble. <laughs> you should try living doesn't with happen. him. The, so... Uh, that was an interesting show. We did a show also in Lakeland um, that was for an older community. I, I seem to click well with the older community. He does too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, well, I mean, you, you don't really find a lot of comedians that have the ability to be clean when necessary. I mean, clearly, if you've been listening... You have to uh, define what clean is, though. Well, and that's a good, that's a good point. Uh, if you've been listening, you've seen that we have adult... Uh, topics but we still kind of playfully just kind of skim over them there a lot of them are innuendo um if you haven't been listening you can listen to our podcast at the happy fm dot com the no oh crap the good happy the, the, hour the, at the goat the, the happy hour at goat fm the, happy goat. the goat the goat fm dot com uh i promise i have not been drinking professionalism i have yes, yes. So basically, um, what Zenith is trying to say is our comedy is uh, comedy for adults without the adult content. Well, I want to say that you still have the adult content, no, and disagrees. that's very important. Here, it's very important. I get booked for shows, and I tell them I'm a clean comedian. I like to gravitate around PG-13. Yeah. Oh, that's cool because we have kids in the audience. Ah, the key word of PG-13 is 13. So. If children are there that are under the age of 13, sure, they may not get the jokes. They'll go over their head. Yeah. But it makes it uncomfortable for the adults in the audience. Paul actually was with me at a show <laughs> where I bombed horribly. And part of the reason was, first off, it was too long of a show for little children to be there. They started getting disruptive. And it's hard for the kids, the parents to focus. And then, you know, I mean, PG-13 means you don't say, for example, the D word. But you can say the atomically correct penis, and it still gets a little weird with... It does, because some parents, like this one over here, doesn't like to explain what any of that means. If you have a kid that goes, hey, what does that mean? <laughs> and then you are you have to be the grown-up responsible parent that explains all of that. Why the parent that actually said it is in That's the corner job. like... Whoa! Mom's job. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. In I'm short, kidding. most of today's comedians constantly drop f bombs and you do graphic material about stuff that a lot of people cringe at. Zenith and I don't do that. We're a little family or friendly, but family still -er? keep yeah, family or friendly. I'm starting to talk like family -er. Zenith. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but Latino still, keep here. your kids at home if we're at a comedy club, right? I don't know why people bring little kids to a comedy club. Well, that sometimes it does thing. make sense. It could be a, a, a 60-year-old's birthday party. Well, if it's a well, private well, no, event, he, sure. He said oh, club, club, club. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yes. Yes. Club, I agree. Uh, most of them do have an age limit, though. And I've still seen yeah. plenty of times where they let the kids in, and it just... It just even for it me, up. who's a cleaner comic, and I look out and see those kids sitting there, I'm like, oh, this is going to go great. I, 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 we haven't mentioned before, but Gina and I actually run a children's charity. Please check it out, the neversfoundation.org. I run a children's charity. I get very, very uncomfortable. It throws off my game to see any kids in there, yeah. even if it was fully disclosed ahead of time. I've actually added part of my contract because of that show that if children are present when you told me PG-13, I have the ability to, at my discretion, shorten the show. Uh, because again, first off, kids, they're not there to watch two hours of comedy. And secondly, uh, uh, there are certain topics that you may want me to hit that I don't feel comfortable doing around kids. So, uh, but in any case, I, now I will say one thing, uh, and we may slightly disagree, I don't think that there is such a thing as too dirty of comedy. I do clean comedy because I have an end goal and that's to help people and I run a children's charity and I'm a motivational speaker. But with that being said, 
uh, there are plenty of famous comedians that are very offensive, and I and I don't I don't have any issues with their problem with their topics. They're not uh, topics. necessarily offensive in, in like a bad way. I mean, there's a it's certain like top- a really dirty, funny way. I mean, there's okay off the top of my head. I, I like Daniel Tosh. He's very offensive. Yeah, uh, you know, I like some of his stuff, and I think sometimes he's a little bit too far for my taste, but. That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and, you know, mm-hmm. demand that he be taken off the TV or things like that. Isn't that. That's something we should talk about in a future show is, uh, is there anything that should be off limits when it comes to comedy? Yeah, let's leave that out as a teaser. We're definitely going to talk that about talk about that in a future segment. Um, before we go on break, are we, are we close to commercial time there? All right. Okay. Well, I do want to go ahead and mention that uh, if there's any particular topic that you'd like us to hit, Go ahead and send us a message on our Facebook page, The Goat FM. And uh, or you can also email us and contact us and make sure that you follow us. Uh, I am on Twitter, the Twitter. YouTube, Facebook, uh, help me out. Instagram. Instagram, Snapchat. I'm on all of them. Uh, I, I don't like Snapchat. He we'll doesn't talk know about how to that. work most of them, but he's on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Snapchat for another time. It just has that odd stigma for me. Uh, it does for me, too. Uh, I can't really get over that. But uh, anyways, Paul, uh, where can fans find you? Uh, pay for a ticket and come see me at a club live. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're such a butt. He's so fan-friendly. I am on Facebook, but I, am, I don't really do much of the social media to build up a fan base like comics do so that's not and Instagram and Instagram whatever (laughs) and the Twitter at least I'm only closed minded about Snapchat you're not on Twitter are you we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna go ahead and commercial break when we get back we're gonna talk about should there be a limit to everyone having equal rights I'm Zenith Nevers and you're listening to the happy hour stay tuned something about me that you should know See, I've got plenty of hope. <laughs> Second verse. Hey, I'm Zenith Nevers, and welcome back to the happy hour. Uh, I'm your host and co-host is Paul Jensen. What's up, Paul? Hello. Welcome back. And our, I don't know, the, the definitely the brains Love of the you operation. Know. The brains of, I'm trying to label the brains of the operation. We don't want I'm to here be I am complimenting. Oh, God. You're complimenting? You're complimenting. <laughs> okay. No, complimenting. You just said that. Uh, <laughs> don't edit that out. Have I? No. He is the no. host of a radio show, and he just said, I am complimenting. But wait, you said family. <laughs> <laughs> I like to cuten up some words from time to time. The, I feel like you failed. I feel like we're hitting the happy hour hard today. <laughs> Uh, we're back, and we want. If you haven't seen or heard yet what's been going on, you can watch the videos on Facebook.com or on, uh, sorry, The Goat FM on Facebook, and listen to our podcast on TheGoatFM.com. It is a nice compliment to our radio show. <laughs> <laughs> Good call back. It's family or two. <laughs> <laughs> we're family or friendly. <laughs> uh, Burn! <laughs> would, it, would it be. Family friendlier? Yeah, I know that's, that's what he does. No. Weird, no. though. Friendlier. friendlier. Or family. I like family better. Weird in my mouth. <laughs> uh, Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want to talk about should there be a limit to equal rights? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Stay home. Appar- Next segment. Apparently, apparently, Paul has an opinion. <laughs> Um, which which I like. I like when Paul Paul is kind of like uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Have you guys noticed that? Like he doesn't speak much, but when he does, that's what he's it is. stupid. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He, he's he's wise. Your uh, his kids wouldn't agree with you on that. His children think that he's wise. What about yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's very wordy sometimes. Like yeah. it takes him a long time. To I think the word point. you're looking for is wise. Oh, yes, yeah, no. sorry. Mispronounced. None of this too, right? <laughs> Wordlier. Like, we don't need, we covered that already. So Word, move on. Wordier. Wordlier. 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 <laughs> well, uh, Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Gina actually helps me uh, when whenever we're writing new material. I don't really have anyone to write with. Um, 
so uh, <coughs> Gina and I write together, as I was saying, and uh, she'll co very commonly be like, eh, too many words. Cut out a bunch of words. Oh, I tell him the same thing. I'll see him do his, because he doesn't write. And so he'll, I'll see his bit on the stage. Like, usually the first on part the of stage? his act. Is that what old on people the do? Stage? The stage, the <laughs> Facebook, the what? internet. Mm -hmm. They put the word the in the front of stuff space? on the stage. Well, <laughs> what do you just say on stage? Oh, I guess you could, it works either way, right? <laughs> okay, so it's when I see but it's him wordier. on the stage, I think because he doesn't how, perform and, just on stage. On. I just want to say that you're 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 criticizing how much he has too many words, but then you add words yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, That's what so. we do best. Point <laughs> We're taken. not the ones performing. Do, do, do so as I say, I'll not as I do. So that he's too wordy in a set, in a bit not a set a bit uh -huh. and i'll say you can trim that down i say that trim, about trim the fat off majority yep 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 of them. um i believe that you girls would agree that um gina does not come up with new ideas but she is not hesitant to shoot down um ideas. excuse me i came up with one idea what, 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 the pakaka? <laughs> no, I mean, the pakaka is a true story, so that's not really an idea. And no. in case you missed that segment, check it out. Um, no, the, uh, the bit about dropping the pan in the back of the restaurant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was mine. I did nope. that, everyone. That was hers, if you guys ever watched you come it. out and watch the show. So. I uh, did that. <laughs> I only ever watched, like, the first half of the show, because by the second half, I'm already down three whiskeys, so that's she's it, so, I'm done. The rest drunk. of it's done, yeah. Blackout drunk. The first half was wordy. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, rights. Yes. Um, I am actually intrigued also by. Also lefts. <laughs> I am also intrigued. And U-turns. <laughs> Should we give equal rights to everyone? Um, In yeah. what way? Well, yeah, okay. That's what yeah. I was actually. This is kind of an old story, but it it's still going on in the Supreme Court. I'm not sure. There was a baker that refused to. No, they just settled it, I think, recently. Okay. In the last year. He he didn't want to make a cake for a gay couple, and I, you know I saw it on social media. People were just uh, debating left and right. And it drew it drew the question. Well, equal rights we we can all agree is good. Is there a limit though? Is there, a, you know? What, and then what's the difference between like it being a human rights issue and it being your right as a business owner? Yes. So. And at what point do? Uh, never mind. <laughs> because I can't figure Brain out exactly part, how yeah. to say it. Like how? When do you say that? Okay. Um. You have rights as a gay gay couple. We, you know, you can marry and you can do all this mm -hmm. stuff. So you're a gay couple, and so they have all that. And then we say to the baker, "You can do your bus run your business how you want, as long as you're not you know, some harming point, anybody or whatever." Others, yeah. yeah. So at some point, there's that crossover line. Yeah. Where you say like, "Okay, well, this offends me," or I, I well, feel like I'm being denied because you're not going to bake me this cake because I'm gay. But so. In one way, you're trampling on their rights, but in the reverse way, you're trampling on the baker's rights to say, you know, this is my personal belief on things, and this isn't how I want to run my business. Well, and, you know, where can you, um, because let's say, generous assumptions, mm -hmm. <laughs> they come in, right, and they're like, okay, we're going to get married, but we want the inside of the cake to be rainbow. Are you going to say, oh, well, I'm not making it then because you're gay, and you're like, no, we just really like unicorns. Or uh, two guys come in, they say, oh, we want a penis cake, but you'll make a penis cake for a bridal... Um... Right. This is, this is where I, I would say that it gets dangerous, is where you hide beneath religious conviction to hide phobia. But are you? But see, you're assuming that because they're saying that that's well, my religious <clears throat> conviction, that it is a phobia. Let's, Maybe but, it's just that they don't believe that way. Well, I'm not that not that they're afraid of it. Yeah. Here, here's that. the facts on this particular case. You're talking about the one that went to the Supreme Court. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, I actually uh, read quite a bit about this. First of all, this baker did not refuse service to this gay couple. Um, he was trying to work with them to figure out a, a, a cake that would work for their wedding. So he was fine making a cake for a couple that he knew was gay and was going to be for a gay wedding. The problem he had is whatever cake they kept requesting was extremely gay-themed to some degree. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if they never explained the details, but to where he felt their design crossed the line for what he could do because of his religious beliefs. So a lot of people right off the bat were trying to say this baker was awful because he denied service. No, he didn't do that. He was trying to work with this couple, but then they wanted something that crossed the line for him. So uh, the question is, is that wrong? Here's my viewpoint. I uh, ran a business for statues. I used to sculpt and make statues and that. I oh, you have, don't do that anymore? It's to a degree. Okay. Um, do you want I, to plug in your website? No, I don't. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> here, here's the thing. I, I had somebody, and Sarah will vouch for this, we had somebody contact us uh, that wanted us to make stuff that was for some sort of white supremacist group. Uh, there was like a Klansman statue they wanted us to do and a very racist, racist uh, black person statue. I, I, stuff that we did not want to do. We were very uncomfortable to it. Now, according to the law, that is free speech. They're allowed to believe in that and have white supremacist groups in that. And they probably could have taken you to court for right. denying the request. What is the difference there? Because I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I personally Because racism feel is accepted as bad. Yeah, you stood up for your, and good. I fully support that. That's amazing. I wouldn't want to do something like that. And that's something that, I mean, and that's the great, because I know that, Zenith, you feel differently. You I, wanna... I, okay, I, <clears throat> uh, odd, man, odd man in the room, I, I disagree. Uh, and that's and that's okay. I think we have a great relationship where we can disagree on plenty of topics. In fact, I welcome that. I, I wish we on more topics disagreed on. Screw you, Zena. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the law should have told you that you have to make them. And this is why, because you don't have to go to one of their rallies and hate, let's say in this case, black people. No more than the baker has to go love penis. He. His job is to bake cakes, whatever cake they want. And where do you draw the line? What if what if I don't like fat chicks and I don't want to do fat chick cakes? Or, you know, whatever. It's not your job to judge the other person's creativity. Just do your job and bake the cake. Don't go and, and hang out at every pride march, but make the cake. But at the same time, the baker also used the uh, argument that this was his creative license that was being infringed upon. Yes. That it wasn't just you know, a standard cake or that, that he's an artist and he would have been forced to create something using his skills that was completely against his core belief. Bingo, hardball, Zenith. Yeah. You want to talk so much about self-worth. How are you not compromising your self-worth when you go completely when you don't against stand up your for what you believe in? Are you guys trying to get my motivational? Wait, I think <laughs> Nevers give up. <laughs> Never give up on racism and homophobia. <laughs> Do you, I kind of, my initial thought was that, because we see a lot of this where people are offended by this or that and people say, just move on, just yeah. move on. This guy is not the only baker in the world. Yes. So what if he doesn't want to do for gay weddings so or this or that or whatever? Else. Okay. Pick well, up your money and go somewhere else. On that, on that, uh, from that perspective, I certainly don't want someone making my cake that is not comfortable with my lifestyle. If, let's say, in this hypothetical, right. I am. So I feel like they're sexual. just trying to be difficult eh. or yeah, win well, some money. Here's the thing. Okay, so we talked about, for example, in an earlier episode that if you didn't listen to, you can go to GoToFilm.com. <laughs> uh, we talked about, for example, uh, women being uh, sexually harassed. Right. And you, we, if you're not the victim, you do not have the right to tell the other person, oh, just get over it. Just because you're not... They're not being not, a victim. They're not never going to get a cake. There is a billion other places to get a cake. I'm sorry. No I want different. fried chicken on Sunday. I am not going to sue Chick-fil-A because they have their religious beliefs and are closed on Sunday. That's bull crap. There's 90 other places you can go to get chicken. That's it's not a, a good cake. example. That would be, that would be Chick-fil-A food. closing no. on gay couples no, coming no, in. No, that would no, be a better okay, example. That I mean, also you're com- kind of happened. Well, that, and that's also that's also okay, wrong. We're talking food. We're not talking medical treatment. We're not talking a hospital that yeah. denied them services. No. Here's the thing: we're if not a talking woman, about them being denied a if job. If a woman went to a to get a job and the person didn't give her a job because she's a woman, no one would tell her get over it, go to another job. We're Why would you want to work there anyway? We are you talking about someone paying for a service 
of an individual that's not a private company they are open to the public you have they a right serve to, the public everybody has a right to refuse service as a yeah. massage therapist and esthetician i reserve the right to refuse service you refuse service based off not feeling comfortable with someone especially if they give amen you i'm a, not comfortable a making product. a gay not cake based off something that's protected under the constitution if you're denying someone based off something that's protected under the constitution i'm sorry i, I have feel to like side it's with not protected under the constitution because we wrote it the is uh, the lifestyle is actually an amendment uh, but here's why that argument in my opinion fails i'm going to use a different um news story altogether okay okay <laughs> this happened about a year ago uh there was a male a biological male student that said he was now transgender and i'm not even going to go into that okay that's mm -hmm. not for debate we're not going to that yep. Topic for another day. Right. But it was a uh, biological uh, male student saying he is now transitioning to female, sued the school district because he wanted to use not only the female restrooms, but also the locker rooms and all the other mm -hmm. places. The school tried to work with him and say, hey, how about you use this private restroom that's mostly for the teachers? You can use that if you feel uncomfortable. No, he went and sued, and it was found that the school was forced to allow this m biological male student to change in front of female students and everything. So they pushed this saying it was the law, despite the fact that every parent and every female, uh, every female student and every parent of the female students were against it because they felt their rights were being infringed upon. But the law said we have to make it equal for this one person. That is not how life works. You don't put down the many for the needs of the few. It's like a Star mm -hmm. Trek reference there, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Something. <laughs> Like but that. that's the thing is to give him those I think equal you can make rights. Concessions. Right. There has to be that middle ground again. Yeah. You can't take mm. rights away from one person because right now being gay is hot and accepted, and you got to go out and do all this kind of stuff. So you can't take rights away from people that aren't. Well, I would have to agree on that point in the fact that there has to be a way where we can meet in the middle ground. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep. We'll, I want to save if you don't mind the restroom topic for another day. But I do want to say that uh, at some point in time, I think Kennedy said something along the lines of us having a bubble, that we're free to do whatever we want to do in that bubble. This is in my own words. As long as our bubble doesn't infringe on another person's bubble. But that's what that couple's what bubble that... infringed upon that baker. I, yeah, so I yeah. Because he didn't, who... he didn't turn them away saying, oh, you're gay, get out of my shop. He no, said, he hey, didn't. you're gay, I'll work with you, I'll make you a cake. But they presented this him something that's like, I oh, I can't. Do. That's when their bubble, so, you know, as you say. I, you, we were talking about this the other day. Okay, uh -huh. I went to beauty school for two years. We covered two paragraphs on how to do African-American hair. Uh -huh. I never touched a black person's hair, ever. And when I started working in a salon, and from time to time, somebody would come in, and they'd be in my chair, and I had to tell them, I can't cut your hair. I don't know how. See, that's but see, the, I that's don't know not, how. I'm, so is, I'm refusing the service. So really, you're if we refusing go back the to service the school, based off not being able to give them a good, and that's what this a, baker a good, did. I cannot do that cake. He, he, he wasn't unable to. It's, he didn't want to. Okay. Based off his own religious convictions, and here's where here's where it gets into that gray water. You seem to have you more of protect, an issue that he's using that his religious convictions bothered him. Than which is have also an protected. Issue. Therefore, it's yes. a yes. Here's where it comes. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. So the religious. Religious convictions are also protected, as mm -hmm. well as lifestyles. So where do you compromise? You can't obviously That's, give everyone equal you rights. That's the whole point. There is no way to, to do equal baker. rights. It like has to vary it depending has to on the be situation. Si yeah, yeah. Well, it has to be from a from a from a from a from a from a uh, situation to situation. Right. So, exactly. for example, in the case lower lower Florida area, there are areas of the lower Miami that you're not allowed to have a dog that is a a, a pit bull. So one can argue one should have the right to have whatever dog they want. But you have, let's say, a parent that has their child bitten, and that parent will argue, well, one should have it's the right to have their the children animal. being able to pay. It's how you raise the animal. Well, that's a whole other subject. The point is, is that at some point in time, someone has to compromise a little bit or give or lose a little bit of their right to be able to come to some type of middle ground. But I think that's the problem in this day and age, at least in the society in this country, people don't want to compromise. It's my way or the highway. 
mentality yeah. that people Here, have. And with the Baker case, the Baker was compromising. Let's see what we can get you that'll work for you. Who wasn't compromising? Who? The well, Baker okay. or the couple? But the again, couple wasn't compromising. But again, no one has the right to speak for the victim other than the victim. If you feel victimized and you feel like you're That's judging true. me I mean, based off lifestyle. We can't say, well, you're not allowed. It's no different than to say to a black person, you need to get over slavery. You don't have that right. You're right. not black. But in the case of the baker, the baker can also say he's a victim. Yeah. So it, Absolutely. both of them can. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the, hence the topic, can everyone have equal rights? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that at the beginning, didn't I? <laughs> Are you saying this segment should have been 15 seconds long? <laughs> I, I, I warned you. I, I, I hold the belief that you just need to mind your own business. All if right. it does not directly affect or harm you and your family, like, way out of the way, like, blatantly, this has offended me, then you can't say boo. But see, then you're How setting you a limit on what you think is truly offensive or not. If I say... Uh, okay. You biting your nails offends me deeply. And you say, that is absolutely ridiculous. And then he's saying, if you're a victim, you can be a victim about anything you want because we can't say you're not a victim. There, There's common sense and kindness that goes in with that. And, yes. and mercy, too. And showing people those kind of qualities. So mm -hmm. when I look at this story, and I don't know all the ins and outs, but I haven't talked to everybody. And like I said before, unless, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind closed doors that mm -hmm. nobody knows. Yes. But if you go from the story just as, uh, just let's just say the baker tried to work with them. Mm -hmm. They were adamant and, and refused because they had to have this particular design, so the baker refused. Then in that case, and then Move the baker on. was taken to court. Yeah. To yeah. me, the couple moves on somewhere else. For sure. Okay, I just would've. like if I was There's, sitting here biting my nails, you have the freedom yeah, I to go but I don't, to another room. I'm not going to go to Victoria's Secret and sue them because they don't carry bras in my size. I think it sucks. I think it sucks that my bras are $75 and little A-cup Susie over here has $10 bras. But I'm not going to go sue anybody over it. That's just the yeah, way Yeah, but your bras contain sheet metal and all sorts of reinforcements. Well, yeah, yeah, I understand. But Another I reason for you folks like, to check just, out the video of today's show to see Sarah's bust. Oh. Yeah, no, just, I'm hitting they, in the corner. Let's just say oh, they yeah. could serve, serve as hammocks uh, on, on a side job. Uh, <gasps> on that note, <laughs> uh, don't be rude. On that no, let's talk about how much we know our couple. Let's play a game called BFFs. Uh, normally played with friends, but today we're going to play a couple version of it. What we're going to do is oh. the couples are going to be flashed a question. The males are going to write down the answer, and we're going to find out how well the males actually know our female counterpart, counterparts. Here we go. What's the question for the day? What would your significant other request as a last <laughs> meal? Mm. Mm. Uh, can, we have, can we have some Jeopardy music? So we, yeah, we need like a time, like Jeopardy music. Uh, something, anything. I'll do it. Da -na -na, da -na -na -na. Talk amongst it. Yeah, air silence now. We here we go. go. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Yep. I've got mm. it. Who's going to flip it first? <laughs> okay, it's like your show. You should go at the same first. Time? Why is that? Yeah. not? Okay. okay. I'll go first. Okay? Okay. My significant other would skip the food. Give me coffee and wine. Ah, <laughs> coffee and wine. <laughs> yes. Am I right? Yeah. You yeah. Missed the chocolate, though. Ah. Chocolate cake. So close. Two out of three. Two out of three. Isn't that what meatloaf says? Two out of three ain't bad. All right, uh, Paul. So, uh, what would you think? Meat loaf's a good answer. Too. If we're talking like actual food, gosh, I don't know. It's no, we're be talking about you. Like Mexican or sushi. What What would be? For you my couldn't last, live without, last meal. Probably yeah. Mexican food. Oh, see, because I, I chose right. whiskey, Pepsi, and, and crushed, crushed ice. ice. <laughs> yeah, but that's not food. That's what I said. But you survive on that. I so do well. almost survive on that. You are correct. You like your Pepsi, you like now, your crushed Sarah, ice, you and you really like your whiskey. Now, Sarah, when you go somewhere and they have cubes, do you ask them to crush the ice? No, I'm... 
No, because she's not a diva. Then I would have to sue she's them for not having crushed ice. Right. That would, that that's, bubble because it's your would right be no, Because what I do is I go to Chick Fil A and I go to Sonic <laughs> and I go to Racetrack because they have the crushed ice. But Paul not, would. not on Sunday at Chick Fil A because they're closed for the Lord's Day. Right. Paul would demand it because uh, he is the greatest comedian of all time. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> don't ever doubt. Well, and the greatest the father, the greatest it. husband. <laughs> Uh, right. I'm a great lover I, I too. Think, by the way. I think the takeaway from couples? this, I think the no, yeah, I think we're going to go to commercial breaks. Oh, soon. we're going to commercial. Okay. The takeaway from this is that our significant others Would probably rather need drink. an intervention. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so if you're out there uh, and you want to be a sponsor of our show, <laughs> send whiskey. Because <laughs> our women Anyone? are going to need sponsors at AA soon. <laughs> we're going to go to a commercial break, uh, but when we get orders. back. We're going to talk about, should there be hair on the body? <laughs> yes. It's the happy hour with Zenith Nevers. We'll be right back. Was this one time he sang Power and Love by Celine Dion in the shower? Oh, he also cries for the notebook when Ali asked Noah, why didn't you write me? Uh, he says, sorry, I wrote you 365 letters. I wrote you every day for a year. I hope you use their instead of shampoo. Welcome back to the happy hour. I am your host, Zenith Nevers, co-host, is Paul Jensen. What's up, Paul? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got our more important co-hosts. Uh, Wait, what? Sarah, more important? <laughs> I don't know. Most uh, important. The family oh. He just complimented you again. <laughs> Uh, those are callbacks that if you haven't heard, you need to go to our app, <laughs> the go to FM. Com. Go, go. I think we're running that one into the ground. <laughs> All right, we gotta and switch it. Sands on your feet. So Sarah and and Gina, say what's up. Sup? What's up? Uh, we need gonna... to bring back what's up. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but bringing back uh body hair. Um, it's a, you know, it's a thing. A lot... It's yeah. there. Some some trim, some wax. It's coming wax, back. You know. Um, Are we gonna specify? In yes, we're area? gonna specify. We're gonna get yeah, crazy. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Get we're gonna crazy. get cray cray for our urban audience. Cray cray. That's so like. It. That's what you did. Two thousand and something. I lost else. most of Ocala. Uh, so, body hair. Um, I just I I'm guessing that you're like a chia pet, just from your arms. Well, I'm looking at you. You obviously wax and tweeze and. <laughs> Percolate or whatever. Well, I don't know. Metrosexual. What... Yes. Not to be confused you with You always have been, though, for real. Yeah. Yes. Since I've known you. Well, I mean, it. I, okay. So, if we get not too graphic, but, you know, I do remember uh, growing up as a kid. and I hope uh, so. Because <laughs> growing up as an adult sucks. <laughs> I, I remember like it being all of a sudden brought up to me. We had a friend in high school, uh, who, his name was Leslie, and he was like, "Hey, so do you have, do you have hair there?" What? I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, and Tell here's him what you did, I, so I told I, <laughs> Tell him I told what you him, did. I told him that I did, and he demanded proof, which whoa, in hindsight, <laughs> who names their son Leslie? Okay, that's a trigger for me. We need to that should have been that. <laughs> Um, so we actually like for the longest time. You and your brother. Me and my brother, we used hair nets as fake uh, proof. They really <laughs> did not want to well, know that. Yes, we did for it's the a longest hilarious time. Hilarious story. So it what? You very... like glued it to your crotch? No, no, no. no. You just <laughs> stuffed it through. You just. So, <laughs> so it's peeking out the sides. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and for like the longest time, no. this was. I don't know how, what would you call that? Pro not proof of life, proof of pubes. And uh, that was the thing. I call it sick. That's what I call it. <laughs> Fast forward, the, the, the early 90s, I actually do <laughs> hit puberty. <laughs> you mean and, and, and early then, 2000s? <laughs> and thank you for being generous. Uh, I was a late bloomer. But here's the thing is, then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, you gotta trim, you gotta shave. What? I just got these. That ain't fair. So who's telling you you gotta trim? Uh, yeah, but I don't. I'm, I was proud of it. <laughs> no, I'm asking you. Who I, was telling you you're supposed to? Well, because nobody's audience. ever told me. Oh. Um. So it's like. Well, a I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just talking at that point in my life. No, well, yeah. the other guys in the locker room like, no. dude. No, really? I'm talking about significant others. This is, you know, again, late bloomers. I, you know, women. 
women. Mostly, girls. Mostly girls. Women. Mo mostly women. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I grew up, my mom said you just just so nothing shows when you wear a swimsuit. That was it. Yes. Okay. And nowadays, it's like let's all look eight years old again. Yeah. No. Thank and you. I'm just not. I'm cool not with down that. with the prepubescent look. Yeah. Me neither. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not Here, cute. Here's like, look, but I it just, doesn't ladies. have to be like. Let's get our safari kit either. Like no. it doesn't need to be like a veritable the forest. Yeah. About it. The whole view of body hair in general, though, has changed because a few years ago, like a hairy chest on a guy, that was sexy. It you know, is that, it is that so was a, sexy. a sex symbol. The guy had but to have see, a hairy chest. Like now women 80s. are like, Ugh, no, I want I to look like a man. I think that's a few years ago. A few years think, ago, it well, was hairless, naked. Mobile yes, rat. I think hair is coming back in for men. Yes, it yes. is. Yeah, well, it had well, it was like linoleum versus yeah, Berber no, carpet. No, I'm not into that at all. Versus shag carpet. It's all good to me. <laughs> I like something to run my I, fingers through. And now I remember, <laughs> I remember, like in my late teens, that my mom would brag about uh, loving running her fingers through uh, a man's chest hair, I have to tell you what my mom used to say and, about my And fingers. I would be like, oh, mom, God, I just puked a little bit in my mouth. Yeah. But here, no. fat, you know, now 2018, I, I, it may be making a comeback, yes. along with the dad bod, which in that case, incredibly I will be... Incredibly sexy. Incredibly sexy. Incredibly, yeah. Because I have an aunt bod. You My... want to know why? Because <laughs> food is good, people. Right. It's, it's not our enemies. By the way, if there's any restaurants out there that would like to sponsor the show, we're hungry. We're, we are hungry, and we do need advertisers yeah. for our show. And I like ribs. <laughs> we like pizza. Yes. <laughs> uh, wine and coffee. Yeah. Um, Whiskey and Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all of our sponsors will be food related. Uh, so. How about n now? Would you do you have a variation in what you pr now? How many? I see you trim Just your beard, Paul. Well, okay. Well, yeah. No, I trim his beard, and every summer Body I shave his back. That's facial well, hair. Is that okay? Can I talk about well, that? Yeah. Well, I, okay. I'm facial hair in French. He okay? has a very hairy back. So in the summer when we swim in that, I shave his back. So when he swims, does his hair move with him in the it water? It does. Like it's <laughs> got small patches. Like you can grab it and pull it. Uh, they use me for oil slicks. Nice. <laughs> Soak it right up. <laughs> no, I, here's here's the difference between you and me. I am a masculine male. Oh, oh so. there we go. The real man. No, no. <laughs> the, no, no. Well, no one's disagreeing. Uh, <laughs> nice. He's he's. If if you're not watching our our Facebook live, uh, you're missing out on the booby dance. The male booby dance. Um, okay, so he, you trim, you now the trimming way. the beard. I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about the whole hipster, like crazy? I don't like the what is with the grizzly, bushy beard grizzly. look. That just looks how did that become a style? How are women not like laziness? The whole beard thing. Okay, here's the thing beards are fine, mustaches are fine, but just like you, you the hair on the top of your head, keep yeah, but now they're blowing out check. the beards now. It's a thing. They're yeah. Really what? They blow out they're their beards. They're blowing them out so they're longer. Yeah, well, they I know. It's... And smoother, and they yeah. can shape them with round brushes and everything. Hey, there's too much. Guys are too hung up on the whole beard thing, like it's a big deal oh. to grow a beard. Yeah, nice it actually takes effort to not have a beard. Nice face pubes. Let's move on. Uh, trim that a little bit. You I, always go listen, there. Listen, <laughs> I wax my beard, my goatee, my mustache, my sideburns. She's Portuguese, by the way. So. <laughs> it takes a lot of wax in our house. Do you have a preference on um, Female? The ladies' body hair? I don't like hairy legs and pits. I know in some cultures that's accepted. Uh, I've been brought up to wear hairy legs and pits. Not and they are ready. not allowed to have those equal rights. No, <laughs> we're not allowed to be hairy beasts. That's right. Um, but any other preferences? That, that's a little personal. Um, but, I put a hair in my underwear. Yeah. <laughs> he gets all excited. Gina has a grievance. I have a grievance. Okay, go. Okay, so my grievance is when you go to the store to buy a trimmer, ladies out there, lady trimmers do not work as well and retail for about $20. Oh, same with re leg razors, too. But beard trimmers, for whatever reason, are less than $10 and, in my opinion, work better. They mm. usually do. It's the same with leg razors. It's the same with underwear. Us guys get a big pair of thick, Comfy. you know, yeah, awful, powerful, masculine underwear for like three bucks, and you go and get like a thread, and it's thirty. So that's true. It's I, just, 
Well, that brings us to our next topic, which is our motivational minute. Uh, <laughs> kind of. Your not really. segue. No, yeah, that was this, really bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the segue needs WD-40. But for time restraints, uh, we want to talk about if someone doesn't respect your personal view, lifestyle, or your personal choice on trimming, move on. Move on. There's no need to ever have someone or entertain anyone that doesn't respect it. And just being into that environment lowers your self worth. What happens when you harbor, babe? Uh, you are, well, you're not setting boundaries and you're becoming resentful for someone that you should have just set boundaries and moved on. Wait, I feel like you really need to open up to you now. So, that is our motivational minute, and in conclusion of our happy hour, we talked about <laughs> we talked about Paul uh, crunching in the microphone his pork grind chips. We talked about movies that are coming out. We talked about uh, should there be a limit to rights, body hair or no body hair, and we talked most of all about being happy. This is the conclusion of our happy hour, and I want you to remind you to never limit your hour. Your happiness to an hour? <laughs> I can't seem to get that right. <laughs> Stay tuned for our next show. Well, I hope he's stage dive and your face catches you. I hope he's on the hot because she ends up with you. And that means.